These are our notes on the Pauli exclusion principle, Hund's rule, and orbital diagrams. So the Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers in an atom. So another way to say this is that no orbital can contain more than two electrons and their spins must be op opposite. So I like to think about it like you can't fit more than two shoes in one shoebox. So in this case an orbital is relating to a shoebox. And in order to fit two shoes, and think like maybe high top basketball shoes, you can't fit high top basketball shoes in one shoebox when they're both facing the same way. And so we fit high top basketball shoes in one shoebox when we face them in opposite directions. So we can t fit two electrons in one orbital when we have them spin in opposite directions. And that's indeed what they do. And so those up and down arrows are going to be how we represent our proposed spin for those electrons and how they can fit in each orbital. And so we kind of think about it like, here's my street, here's my apartment building, here's my level, and then here's my floor maybe, and then this is maybe apartment A. So maybe this is apartment A and this is apartment B. So they're existing in the same orbital, which is level, level two, floor two, but they're not existing in exactly the same space. And so that's how we can have that up and down spin. So Hund's rule tells us we must fill orbitals of equal energy levels singly before pairing up. So we like to say that we like to live alone first, or Hund's rule kind of sounds like Attila the Hun, and we, never say, we say we never want to live with Attila the Hun. So what we're talking about here is I like to represent these orbitals like a twin bed. And so if I've got a twin bed here, and a twin bed here, and then at the p orbital I have three twin beds, that's where we're going to get to talk about living alone first. So on floor level, on level one, maybe in our apartment building, I have to share my room because there's only one option. And so what we would do is we would draw an up arrow to represent the spin, and we would draw an down arrow to represent an electron spin. So in the level one, they have to share the twin bed, but they do so by sleeping head to foot, kind of, in a twin bed. And so there's an up arrow and a down arrow. In level two, the same thing happens. There's only one orbital to start with, and so they've got to go up and down. In level 2p here, we've got three orbital possibilities. So there are three twin bed options. And so what we do is we say live alone first. So we're going to look at this first orbital and say, all right, I'm going to have an up arrow. But instead of directly writing a down arrow now, because this spot is available, I'm going to write one more up arrow there. So again, because here is open, I would write one more up arrow if I were to keep going on my electron configuration. So carbon would not be written like this because there is an opportunity to live alone or fill energy levels singly first before pairing up. So orbital notations or orbital diagrams are drawn as lines and electrons as up and down spins. So let's say when we're drawing orbital notations and dealing with orbital notations in class, we're always going to both draw the orbital notation and we're going to write the electron configuration as well. So if I have hydrogen, I know my electron configuration is 1s1, and so I know I have 1s, I know there's one dash in the s because there's only one shape, and that up arrow is representing the one electron in the electron configuration. So lithium, I know the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s1, and so I have my two orbital shapes here for the two s orbitals in each level. I know that 1s has two electrons, and it's represented right there. There's that two, and there's my two arrows. And then the 2s1, just like here, my one electron is showing my one up spin. Most of the time you're going to see the up spin draw, drawn first, but it, it isn't wrong if you draw the down spin first. So how do we write orbital diagrams? So let's practice here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to write out the electron configuration, which we've done for you. When you do these in class, you're going to write your own electron configuration first. So you're going to write the electron configuration, and then what I want you to do is write out each orbital and the number of dashes that each, or the number of shapes that each orbital has. So the 1s has one shape, the 2s has one shape, so I have one dash, the 2p has three shapes, so I have three dashes. Then what we're going to do is look at our electron configuration. So I know my 1s has two electrons. So I know that's going to be an up and a down arrow because I have one energy level. The 2s is on its own energy level here, so I can only fill an up and a down. So now the 2p 
has three available places. So we're going to live alone first, we're going to fill energy levels singly before pairing up. So I would have single energy level filling first, so one, two, three, and I have one more electron left over, so now at this point I would have to pair up. So again, Hun's rule is sing filling single energy levels, fill filling energy levels singly before pairing up. So silicon, it's a little bit longer electron configuration, so we're going to write the electron configuration if it's not given to us, but in this case it is, and then we're going to draw the 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, and 3p shapes underneath, and now we can fill in our electron configuration. Our orbital diagrams will look like an up and a down arrow to start, because the 1s only has one shape available. The 2s only has one shape available at that energy level, so it's going to be an up and a down. The 2p has three shapes available at that energy level, so we want to live alone first. We want to fill energy levels equally, singly first, before pairing up. So I'm going to have three up arrows first, but then as I notice, my p has actually six electrons in it, and so I need to actually pair up and fill all of those down electrons now. My 3s has two electrons in it, so I want to fill an up and a down arrow. And my 3p has two electrons in it, and so I want to take here, and I'm going to live singly first before pairing up. So that would be the correct orbital notation for silicon. So if we're looking at the energy levels, as well as Pauli exclusion principle, where they're filling lowest energy level possible first, and then the Hund's rule, where they're living alone first, then we can look at the orbital notation for sulfur. So in this case, I have my 1s, so I would fill that with two arrows, an up and a down. And again, notice I have my electron configuration over here to help me with how many electrons go in each energy level. And then I would have my 2s, which is at the next energy level available, so that would be in an up and a down. My 2p, I'm going to have three up arrows first because they're going to apply to filling energy levels singly before pairing up. And then I'm going to fill in the down arrows and pair them up because I see that my p has six electrons in it. I'm going to fill the 3s next, and I'm going to go up down, and then I'm going to fill the 3p, which has four electrons, so I need to fill up for three first, and then I would need to pair up. So hopefully orbital diagrams are making sense, and we will practice them more in class.